Yo, I and Dr. Cool, Zimbabwean inventor Maxwell Sangolani Chikumbutso has re-emerged on the public stage, breaks the silence as his supporters and diehard fans of Ho's groundbreaking technology, eagerly asking about Hosho's sudden disappearance like he used to, but TGO's time with mixed feeling. Maxwell Chikumbutso is bringing with him a wave of renewed hope and optimism for Africa's energy future. Known for his groundbreaking inventions, especially his self-powered generator, electric car and drone technologies, Chikumbutso has long stood as a symbol of African ingenuity suppressed by global power structures. Before this video ends, I will be playing a clip of a video footage that is reigniting the firestorm that was shutting down the internet earlier February 2025, afterwards his disappearance. To understand the current state at which the development is heading on the future of self-powered technology, we will need to dive just a little bit into the bigger picture that is the big elephant in room, which have the potential to single-handedly fund Maxwell Chikumbutso self-powered technology from scratch to fully working capabilities that will change things faster than anyone can ever imagine. And that's Zimbabwe. Maxwell Chikumbutso's recent alignment with President Emerson Ngagwa's government signals a strategic national push to elevate indigenous innovation in defiance of Western hegemony. However, before we get to the recent breaking silence of Maxwell, let's explore some factors that is quietly brewing with lots of untamed potentials. His relationships with the new world power and how their strategic alliances is reshaping how we will riddle out the possibilities of his invention gaining full-scale commercialization from Africa, then start spreading to other nations alike with shared problems alike. Chikumbutso had previously rejected multi-million dollar offers from Western investors, citing fears of his technology being shelved or stolen. Now, under government protection, he is spearheading a mega-project focused on energy-independent vehicles and infrastructure. His work, backed by both local investors and sympathetic foreign powers, aims to position Zimbabwe as a global hub for disruptive energy tech, potentially bypassing fossil fuels, centralized power grids, and Western-controlled markets. Zimbabwe's economic and diplomatic isolation dates back to the early 2000s, following its controversial land reform program. Designed to correct colonial-era land dispossession, the reforms involved redistributing white-owned commercial farms to landless black Zimbabweans. A bold movement the West hates so much, but you will say it's just a land. Is it really just land? Anyways, how did US treat black Americans trying to acquire landed property? It's like trying to pass through a firewall concrete research about Greenwood, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Black Wall Street, and dig up how West demonstrates furiousity, hatred, and attacks on African Americans who owns landed property in USA. The love shown to African Americans in Tulsa, Oklahoma, was demonstrated with bombing and, and bringing a bubbling city of black Americans into a desert. Just so you know how opposed and raged the Western world can be about empty land that have no mineral resources flowing in it, like it's flowing in African continent. That covert operation was used government-backed, not white mob that raised a city down in two days. It will be a story for another day, as it has just a slight contrast to what transpired between the West and Zimbabwe. While celebrated domestically as a long overdue correction of historical injustices, the program triggered a swift backlash from Western powers. In 2001, the US passed the Zimbabwe Democracy and Economic Recovery Act which effectively blocked Zimbabwe from accessing credit from international financial institutions like the IMF and World Bank. US government and deity Western alliance like UK, France, Germany and total of Europe leaves off exploiting African. By 2003, broader sanctions were imposed by the EU, UK and US targeting individuals, businesses and financial institutions. These measures escalated Zimbabwe's isolation from the global economy. At this juncture, the million-dollar question is, are all things sanctions from entire Western world still stemming from the rightfully landowner retainment ship, or there is more to the story than meets the ears? Let's dig deeper. Top five minerals that are very much in abundance in Zimbabwe include gold, platinum, lithium, diamond, and chrome. Does any of this five mentioned mineral names rings a bell? Absolutely. Now here is where things gets even more interesting, which from this party lies the reality and fate of humanity's success of becoming self-powered by Maxwell Chikumbutso groundbreaking invention. And this fact is the backbone of the Zimbabwean government's more like God's hands on earth to assist, fund and protect the life of African Zimbabwe's born greatest inventor in the world, which by nature, there shouldn't be any excuses except by politics. Finally received an update from the CEO of Faith Technologies, Faith Mungwari. Pretty much this means that Max Ochikumbuto has finally responded, right? Now I'd asked her a question and said, when can we expect the goods to hit the market or the self-powered car and the self-powered gadgets to hit the market? And this was a response on WhatsApp. We acknowledge the delay in bringing our products to market. This has been due to a strategic shift from relying on external suppliers to establishing our own manufacturing facility in Zimbabwe. 
While this transition requires more time, planning and investment, it aligns with our long-term vision for sustainability, quality control and local empowerment. As a result, we've had to recalibrate our cost projections, timelines and product rollout. We appreciate your patience and interest and we'll be sure to share updates with you as soon as our products are ready for the release. Now, personally, I could not read much into that statement, what it meant because it did not give an indication on when we can expect the products. I followed up with a question and asked her bluntly, when can we expect the products to reach the market? And this was a response. We had to look for land and start building a factory. Before production starts, it's a new direction altogether, building a factory instead of importing components. Zim projects, you know how they are unpredictable. Cement can be short or copper wires or anything. So that's the full statement from Faith Mungwari, the CEO of Saith Technologies. Pretty much this statement is coming from Maxo Chikumbuzo. Basically, they're citing that they're still working on building a factory. Now, we know that uh, when you're building a factory, it's not something that can be done like tomorrow. It takes time, especially with them citing cement shortages. I think it will take longer. So uh, don't be expecting. That's just my view. Don't be expecting to get any of Max Ochikumbuzo's gadgets in your hands anytime soon. I would also implore Chikumbutso's team. Even more interestingly, Zimbabwe's mining sector is highly diversified. With close to 40 different minerals, you heard me right, 40 minerals for the people at the back seat. The predominant minerals include platinum group metals, PGM, chrome, gold, coal, lithium, and diamonds. The country boasts the second largest platinum deposit in high-grade chromium ores in the world, with approximately 2.8 billion tons of PGM and 10 billion tons of chromium ore. Yes, you heard me right. The sector accounts for about 12% of the country's gross domestic product, GDP, and 80% of national exports. The Minister of Mines had claimed the sector had the potential to generate $12 billion annually by 2023 if the government addressed challenges such as persistent power shortages, foreign currency shortages, and policy uncertainties. The Chamber of Mines reported the mining industry generated $5.6 billion in 2022. Compared to $5.1 billion in 2021, you heard right, and it projected 10.4% sector growth in 2023. With this, we can clearly see why US and their brothers has been furiously suffocating the economy of Zimbabwe. Oh, before I forgot, the, the ex-president of Zimbabwe, who is now late, the person of Robert Mugabe gave Barack Obama a middle finger to chalk on it. With his gay bills, Mugabe was very brutal enough to tell Obama and his Western allies that if chimpanzees and gorilla can't be gay, they can go to hell with their gay bills. This bold statement and mouth-watery mineral resources denial from exploitation is enough to make chicken in Western world wants to throw bombs on Zimbabwe's economy. Meet ConnectMax Technology, Lokithor. Our today video sponsorship, Lokithor is cutting edge technological innovative industries that bide smart devices that assist to make life easier for you. In a nutshell, ConnectMax sound familiar like Connector Maxwell Chicken Butso self-powered technology that striking resemblance got me. Lokithor is what you get when you combine Lucky Smartness and his elder brother Thor Wisdom. The result is, he who is worthy of true leadership will possess power of Thor Hammer. That's exactly what JP400 compact and yet powerful device is. Be my guest. It knows no boundaries just like Thor. Oh, don't even get me started with it. Multifunctionality SOS. Quick jump starter. It's also your power bank and flashlight. One for all, not to mention it. Incredible, die-hard, long-lasting battery standby that known no weather conditions when I said it kicks it all. Just bring it on. It's also your tire inflator. Wait, here is the bunker. It takes literally on any vehicle tires, be it light or heavy-duty truck, sedan, SUV, you name it, which makes this device such a lifesaver. Lucky and Thor indeed. On Amazon stores, it rate 4.7 comma. That's a kicker right there. If you are a car owner, one big mistake you don't want to do is not having JP400 device from Lucky Thor. Let's go back to breaking the silence, shall we? I have a simpler one. You're all not worthy. And freaking insane as it may sound, even after Robert Mugabe's ouster and Mnangagwa's rise to power in 2017, sanctions persisted. The West cited concerns about political repression, electoral irregularities and lack of reform. In 2024, sanctions were renewed under the Global Magnitsky Act, ostensibly targeting eight individuals and three entities for corruption and human rights violations. Though framed as smart sanctions, they indirectly affect the broader population through overcompliance by international banks and businesses. Despite Western narratives that sanctions are targeted and not meant to harm civilians, 
That was a blatant lie, as the ground reality in Zimbabwe tells a different story. The Zimbabwean government estimates over $150 billion in cumulative economic losses since 2001. This includes blocked investments, diminished trade and exclusion from capital markets. Major global financial systems severed ties with Zimbabwe. Banks that attempt transactions with Zimbabwean entities face exorbitant fees, scrutiny or outright blacklisting. Platforms like PayPal, Stripe and Western Union have long either restricted or denied services to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's inflation at times surpassed 500 billion percent in 2008, with citizens needing wheelbarrows of cash to buy bread. Oh my God, this is the horror the so-called democracy of America into Africa brings to the table. Unemployment soared above 80 percent, and local industries collapsed due to lack of capital and raw materials. A 2021 report by UN Special Rapporteur Elena Duhan stated that sanctions contributed directly to worsening poverty, public service decay and healthcare deterioration. Medical imports were delayed or blocked, fuel shortages were frequent and brain drain intensified as skilled professionals fled. When Zimbabwe turned to international allies for survival, it often found itself trading short-term lifelines for long-term leverage. China, while Beijing provided crucial support from infrastructure loans to telecom tech, it often demanded resource-backed guarantees. Chinese companies gained unimaginable preferential access to Zimbabwean lithium gold and tobacco markets. Some deals, such as the $98 million parliament building, came with geopolitical expectations of loyalty. Russia and Iran, military and nuclear cooperation talks emerged as Zimbabwe sought new global alliances. These relationships carried risks of deeper diplomatic isolation from the West, Gulf nations. The UAE and Qatar offered humanitarian and agricultural assistance, often focusing on food security. However, these were largely transactional, with mining concessions and exclusive trade zones in return. South Africa. As Zimbabwe's largest neighbor and economic partner, South Africa has absorbed millions of economic migrants. But Pretoria too has limits, frequently expressing frustration over being a shock absorber without a regional solution. The financial assistance Zimbabwe received from these allies helped cushion the blow, but always at the cost of control, sovereignty or future debt obligations. While sanctions are externally imposed, Zimbabwe's internal governance issues have compounded the crisis. Critics argue that poor leadership, corruption and policy inconsistency have done just as much damage. $100 billion lost to corruption. According to economic analyst Dr. Gif Mugano, Zimbabwe has lost more than $100 billion since 1980 to corruption and illicit financial flows. Gold smuggling alone bleeds an estimated $1.5 billion per year. Public sector mismanagement. From missing pension funds to ghost workers on government payrolls, public financial mismanagement continues to erode citizen trust. Crony capitalism elites close to the ruling ZANU-PF party control key sectors, fuel, construction and mining, funneling state resources into private enrichment while ordinary citizens suffer. Despite Western pressure, Zimbabwe has found allies in the global south and among African peers, forming alliance with US targeted nations such as Iran, Iraq, Russia, China and the bucket list goes on. Both the African Union and the Southern African Development Community, or SADC, formally oppose the sanctions, calling them unjust and harmful to regional stability. We know when US and their rogue broke allies start placing sanctions or pointing fingers at any nations about their corruption. Nine out ten times that nation economy is booming. In 2019, October 25th was declared Anti-Sanctions Day by SADC, with annual rallies and solidarity messages. China and Russia at the United Nations routinely block or veto new sanctions or human rights inquiries on Zimbabwe, defending national sovereignty and non-intervention principles. This got me puzzled, like what the bloody hell is the UN summit all about when the, those who have bloodstains all over their body are the same people heading the UN summit like clowns making mockery of other clowns? The European Union has lifted some sanctions but maintains an arms embargo. The United Kingdom closely mirrors US positions but faces accusations of neo-colonial behavior, especially given its colonial history in Zimbabwe, formerly southern Rhodesia. In my critical analysis, Zimbabwe government with it tantalizing blade minerals resources can single-handedly fund Maxwell Chikambutso's self-powered technology groundbreaking invention and promote it innovations to a better platter for its sustainability enough to generate revenues as path of government infrastructure that will create significant jobs and foster Zimbabwe growth. In this geopolitical and economic climate, Chikambutso's return isn't just a scientific milestone, it's political. His self-powered generator, capable of producing off-grid electricity without fuel or sunlight, directly challenges the dependency created by Western-dominated energy systems, 
His electric vehicle, which doesn't require traditional charging, offers an escape from oil cartels, battery shortages and grid instability. The government's support of his work sends a message Zimbabwe will not wait for Western validation. It will build its own future, with its own minds, on its own terms. Zimbabwe's path forward lies at the intersection of two roads, genuine internal reform or revolutionary reinvention. The Manangagwa administration must address corruption, rebuild institutions and restore public trust if it hopes to re-engage meaningfully with the international community. If denied that opportunity, Zimbabwe may double down on alternatives, Chikumbutso's tech, eastern alliances and localized economies, creating a new paradigm for national development under sanctions. Maxwell Chikumbutso's reappearance symbolizes more than technological hope. It embodies Zimbabwe's broader struggle for dignity, sovereignty and innovation under pressure. Despite over two decades of economic warfare, the nation persists. With bold innovations and resilient diplomacy, Zimbabwe is turning adversity into opportunity. Whether the world chooses to isolate or embrace its trajectory, Zimbabwe is showing that even when cornered, a nation can find the will to rise. If it had dealt the renegades of Western hypocrisy, whom they refused to allow it further exploitation and stood their ground against all odds, they can do more even in such a daring situation. They can forge their own way regardless of what any foreign sanctions can do. In my opinion, such a rigid president as tough as his predecessors can fund Maxwell Chikumbutso self-powered technology from government pocket and it won't cause a single scratch. The compromised journalist ABD Media Blackout can lie to their Tommy and kids, however. Emerson Nangagwa stands still and in strong solidarity with Maxwell as demonstrated in video footage promoting African greatest inventor. As he shows his unwavering support and solidarity, financially and otherwise in this regards, let the storms of Western politics shouldn't deter your strong will. My esteemed audience for the days of storm is over. Days of carrot donkey trick technologies are outnumbered. If Ibrahim Traore in Burkina Faso has created a chapter for New Africa, President Emerson Mnangagwa might be another page within Ibrahim Traore book that is not bluffing even in civilian suite. Tell me what you think in the comments section and be sure to subscribe to my channel and stay up to date, stay hopeful and even more importantly stay alive. Now if you will excuse me gentlemen and ladies, I have flight to catch and self-powered car to drive that runs on not gasoline or battery but free energy abundant in nature. And Maxwell Chikumbutso, African-born, groundbreaking inventor from Zimbabwe, has made that possible, cooking Western engineers, schools and billion research laboratory.